Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and I'm very excited today because we have one of our expert podcast guests today. He actually has a podcast series on our uh, podcast. Um, if you go online, you're going to see his podcast and all the information about Rizona Health. Rizona Health is an amazing company, and he has created something very special to help people with all different conditions. And he's going to talk a little about that. And he's going to go over a couple of specific conditions that it could actually help. And you know, I'm going to leave it to you, Mark, to talk a little about yourself. Just give them a brief introduction of who you are if they missed the first podcast and tell them a little about the uh, actual um, instrument and technology that you created that has helped millions of people improve their overall health. So, Mark, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm not a doctor. Let's clear that up. As I'm an ex-rocket scientist. And so my interest um, in frequencies ended up start or didn't end up it started with my dog 23 years ago who got sick and a veterinarian told me hey there's this magic machine that can do stuff for arthritis that no conventional medicine can really do and i'm like really so i learned about it from that point that was kind of my starting point so that was 23 years ago i've been looking at the technology since then i don't believe it right is like this stuff can't be real it's too magical but there's too much data and information out there that shows there's something really there so <clears throat> my motivation was around a lot of things but primarily it started with ptsd i think we talked about that in the last session was it made me very frustrated that there was a technology out there that could help people that wasn't affordable yeah. right so there, these machines were kind of being blocked or held hostage in clinical environments and they're expensive. I mean, they're eight to 15, up to $30,000, which the average person can't afford. So the device is called Vibe, looks like that. Um, it's about a little smaller than yourself. It's half the size of the new cell phones, the bigger ones. Um, it weighs like two and a half ounces. And you just, it's very simple. There's 59 core protocols on it. They're in alphabetical order. You just scroll to the one you want, you hit play, and you put it in your pocket. That's it. The protocols range from like <clears throat> 30 minutes to two and a half hours. Each one's different, um, but that's it. It's putting out pulse electromagnetic field. So it's putting out a magnetic field, which sounds really weird and foreign, but it's not. The earth is putting that out all the time. So right. you're engulfed in seven, it's called the Schumann frequencies, which are pretty interesting where they come from. It's from lightning bolts echoing off the ionosphere. So it's the shape of the earth and the size and everything. It makes the earth and the atmosphere almost like a little bell that oscillates. So, so you're surrounded by it. So it's not anything um, crazy or new, really. And magnetic therapies have been around for 4,000 years. Just pulse electromagnetic therapy has been shown to be way more effective. And it's only been around for 50 to 100 years at most. So that's what the technology is. It's really simple. You won't really feel anything except the results. Right. Um, it's not, some people confuse it like with a tens unit where it's going to contract your muscles. You won't feel anything like that. 3% of the people might feel a little bit of tingling or something, but for most people, they won't feel anything. So that's kind of what the technology is. It's, um, like I said, it has 59 protocols are based on 8,000 practitioners and 35 years of playing with it. Yeah. Um, so the frequencies are at, and people ask me what frequencies it run at, but it doesn't. It runs two frequencies at a time. Think of like a chord on a guitar, there's mm -hmm. two notes at the same time. Right. So frequency pairs are a chord, and the protocol is a song. And each song is different depending on what the ailment is. So, like I said, they range from 30 minutes to two and a half hours. So, that that's the technology in a nutshell. How does it work? Nobody knows exactly. You don't know how aspirin works either. But yeah, what we do know, we do know that it the cells, mitochondria specifically in your body, have a voltage on them, like a car battery. When that gets too low, you get sick. Right. And this recharges your cells' batteries. And then ATP, which is adenosine triphosphate, it's the main fuel that your cells use for food. Yeah. It, it, ATP up to 500%. So th those two things have been shown many times in studies. And so it's kind of like giving your body the energy it needs to heal itself. Right. That's in a nutshell. Now you're doing a special right now. You're actually giving 40% off for people 
who are interested in purchasing it. Can you tell everybody about the uh, special sale that's going on? Yeah, and like I said, the, the original device is 15,000, mats are seven to 8,000 out there. This one is $399 retail. And for your listeners, we're giving them uh, about 40% off of that price to, to bring it down. So just to try and get them to try it. And it won't work for everyone, but, and this sounds, I don't believe my own numbers, but we have about a 97% success rate right now. Um, wow. So works for most people if you use it. And the ones that that doesn't work for is I used it once and message to all the 75 year old guys running prostate. Nope. I can't reverse 75 years of prostate aging in one session. You're going to have to use it for 30 days. Yeah. Right? Four weeks and see if it has an effect. But a lot of people will see an instant result from it, which is still crazy to me that it can have an effect that fast. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So everybody, all that information is going to be in the in the description box. You'll find out the uh, the link to go to and the code. And you can click right onto that and you could get the 40% discount. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the code, like, when they go to the landing page, there's more information. They can just read more about it, the technology and everything. We have tons and tons of information. Um, and if they hit the buy now button, it automatically puts the code in there. But back up for a minute, just the information, just because I'm happy about it. Um, the good news is we're growing so fast. We get so many phone calls and so many emails. I just created a AI bot named Monique. So if you go to the web page, it's going to say, I'm Monique. Please ask me a question. She is now within seven days smarter than I am. On any <laughs> so you're going to get an answer a lot faster, probably, if you ask Monique. But I will still call you back if I'm on the phone or mm -hmm. email me. But yeah, Monique is a... Uh, She's doing awesome. She's starting to scare me. <laughs> Give me some answers I forgot I gave her. You know, it's like, <laughs> that one again. Oh, yeah. I wrote that three, four days ago on this chapter on something, something. So it's, it's that's pretty interesting. Oh, wow. I know AI is, a, is an amazing tool. It's pretty crazy. Now, I you wanted to talk about three different types of um, uh, issues like and different conditions and different things that it, it could actually help with. So what were some of the things that you wanted to discuss? Because you had mentioned them earlier. What would be, what's the first one you'd like to bring up in conversation? So blood sugar is the first one I wanted to talk about is in the core protocols, we have the 59, one's called insulin resistance. That's the one that you would run for. That is one of the examples um, where we are seeing a lot of instant results that people do not believe it. I don't believe it, but they have continuous glucose monitors. They're pricking their fingers and doing the glucose measurements. And they're like, how, how could it a chance? And I have people going from 180 to 80. Wow. 30, right. And you're like, I, I don't know if that's sustainable long-term. We're still trying to get enough data to understand that, but there's that. Um, so that that's a huge one. And then what I added about a month ago is, so on the device, the 59, five of them are called brainwave entrainment. Mm -hmm. So theta, gamma, beta, right? So those are in the range of one to 30 hertz. And so I found a collaborate with some other PMF uh, practitioners that have 70 more protocols that are in that range of one to 30 hertz. So I don't have the 8,000 people in 35 years of data behind it myself, Yeah, but they have a lot of experience with that. So now I'm repurposing or adding versatility to the device with those five protocols. So we have a list now of 70 other protocols. Some are duplicates to the core 59, but there's a specific one for diabetes. Mine's insulin resistance, this is diabetes, and it's in a completely different frequency range. So that's kind of like experimentation to try it, yeah. which is cool about all this technology is if your body doesn't need the energy, it just doesn't use it. Right. It just passes through you. So there's, you can't quote overdose. <clears throat> I'll qualify that. A few people will tell me it's making them really tired. And I'm like, so what are you running? And they'll give me a list of 14. I'm like, you ran 14 protocols in one day? Well, cut back. <laughs> pretty, you know, your body needs time to use the energy to let itself heal. So yeah, that's both side effect, really. Um, it's interesting, I'm getting a couple cases where it made me feel sick. And then they came back later and said, well, I found out later I had COVID. 
Right. <laughs> One thing we do know is if you have an infection, is it can make you feel a little ill. So if it makes you feel ill, doesn't necessarily mean it's the device directly. It may be secondary cause of it, but it's releasing some of that inflammation around what's infected, like an infected tooth or an infected toe right. or something. But that's really exciting. Um, anyone that buys it that uses that tells me anything that they're using it for blood sugar is like, I'll beg you to please fill out the little survey at the beginning and do it again in 30 days because we're trying to collect enough data to be statistically significant. I told you this, this on when we first met and other podcasts is my number one goal in all of this is to not hurt anyone. Right. So I've and forever looking at the frequencies, the energy levels, the data that's out there. Um, and I'm confident it doesn't. Number two is I don't want to sell voodoo. So I can't advertise that, hey, you know, blood sugar, whatever is really dropping and really pushing it until I get enough data to fight off the Facebook haters, right? I need right. enough data to show statistically I have a P factor below point. For your medical guys listening, P factor is below 0 0.05, which is what we need to do. Now we have, <coughs> excuse me. A P factor of like 0. 0.0007 for PTSD, but I don't have near enough data for blood sugar yet. But mm -hmm. all the indications are super exciting, right? Yeah. Uh, it's too bad we can't break into the Diabetes Association and get them to try different things. But oh, yeah, sure. so, and don't ever get off your insulin or do anything until your doctor tells you to. Now, I've said that to a couple people, and they're like, that are taking 60 to 80 units a day and they're like no my doctor told me i can cut back on insulin as long as i'm monitoring it right right because of, did i eat donuts that day then maybe i need it right or did i eat healthy that day i don't need as much insulin so right. people, their doctors telling them they can do that and they're doing it but it's yeah. scary don't go from 80 to zero without talking to him right, right? or talking to your doctor because i'm not a doctor but yeah we'll get some super cool results with blood sugar reduction and that's great because, you know, right now diabetes has tripled in, in the past decade. It, it's gone, it, it, it's gone insane. And, you know, a lot has to do with the way people are eating. And if people can, you know, bring down their sugar levels with your technology and be able to, you know, change their eating habits, you know, this could be a, a major tool in, in the community of diabetes. Yeah. And, you know, it's, the argument I have with my doctor, which I'd like to find another one for this reason, is one of my pet peeves is cholesterol. The other one is blood pressure. I know way too much about those two subjects. Okay, <clears throat> And all the studies show that your high LDL does not matter. It is not harmful. Okay, But I'm going to argue with my doctor all the time is like, so your LDL is too high. Not really. It's 130. Okay. Um, it's over your 99 limit or whatever. But yeah higher because i'm doing pseudo keto right i try to cut back on carbs so right. which do you want do you want me to get my cholesterol down then my blood sugar is going to go up right because it says fat free in it means it has something bad in there oh yeah else, mm -hmm. like sugar or something else in there that's bad so that's that's a trade-off i always have with my doctor is trying to get them to get up to speed with their own data it's like I'm much more concerned about my A1C and my blood sugar. In fact, I may have gone too far now that I'm doing the research is mine last time was at 4.7. Yeah. And now, oh, that's too low. So maybe I could start, you know, going the other direction a little bit. But yeah, so blood sugar is super exciting. Um, I hope to collect a whole lot more data from people. And maybe next time we talk, we'll have a P factor of 0 0.007 and we can make an argument. Yeah. And what about people that have been, were born and they have it genetically inclined in their, in their DNA and those people who, who have it from, from birth, that, um, are, can, and can the technology that you have help them in any way, or is this more for the other type of diabetes? It's, you, you're referring to type one, type two diabetes. Again, I'm not a doctor, so I gotta be careful what I say here. Yeah, These yeah. conversations I have with doctors are interesting. Some of the more open-minded ones said, there's no such thing as type one, type two. There's diabetes and there's a grayscale, there's a range mm -hmm. of it. So there's type five. So I don't really know the, excuse me. <clears throat> the real answer is the data that we have has been for mostly type two diabetics. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. 
And can, can this can also help with um, high cholesterol as well? Um, there's a expansion protocol for that, but I have not tested that at all. Okay. And I'm not interested in it personally because I don't believe it. I've looked at the stat wars and the studies, and I know that LDL is not harmful. Okay. I got gotcha. you. So, yeah. Which we've been lied to forever. And you've been yeah. lied to about your pressure too, but that's another one. Oh, yeah. Grab a whole that would be a whole different podcast. <laughs> sure. So what was the other topic you wanted to touch base on? There was another one that you were interested in. You wanted to talk about blood sugar and insulin. And then you mentioned one with yeah, addiction would be the other one, which is this came about from this is how it started. It came about from a customer telling me he was severely addicted to cocaine and strip clubs. And I said, okay. He goes, so I've been running the Sulpageo frequency resolve, which is 417 Hertz. Um, he's running that and he's doing one other one, but primarily 417. He goes, I don't have cravings for either one of those anymore. Wow. Goes, really? So <clears throat> I've been digging into that 417. Uh, there's two other frequencies. And then I found a couple NIH studies that were double-blind clinical trials running brainwave gamma frequency. So 25 to 30 hertz, that got like an 85% re improvement in addiction. So I'm like, I, Circumstance had a podcast kind of like this with a lady in uh, England a month ago, and it was after the podcast was over, I brought up this story about addiction. She goes, I know a lot of people with money and sponsoring addictions and clinics so we're meeting with somebody here um this month that's got good. a bunch of money has multiple addiction clinics so we're gonna go run some studies there hopefully um so you know oxycodone you know is awful uh as far as the addictions there yeah and you know things like it immediately goes to drugs and alcohol and stuff but things like a strip club that i just mentioned and one that stuff i had i'm smart enough to have thought of yeah. A guy um, three weeks ago, he goes, I bought this because I saw a thing about your addiction for. So what's the number one drug in the world, Stacy? The number one drug? Most popular drug in the world. So that's illegal or? No, it's legal. Oh, it's legal. So I would say the most popular one would be marijuana. Caffeine. Caffeine. Oh, wow. Yeah. And think about that. Powerful drug in the world, although it's legal, right? So I, a customer called me and goes, I bought this for my wife because she drinks 13 to 15 cups of coffee a day. Oh, wow. Like, wow. So that's like drinking it all day. Does she sleep at night? He goes, no, not really. So he goes, she ran it for three, four days, and she's back to two cups. Oh, wow. I've never seen her drink only two cups. So that's encouraging. That's when I never thought about caffeine. No, I never thought about that. Yeah, me neither. I did think of food and sugar just because I can't, I can't run Facebook ads for heroin addiction, right? Yeah. But I can afford donuts and too much eating. And um, that same lady I just mentioned, honestly, today, she told me two different people in her preliminary study, which I didn't know she was doing. Yeah. Um, for food addiction, just people eating too much potato chips, snacking. Yeah. That they're crazy way back. So it's still experimental, obviously. All yeah. of this is. But it's that's encouraging as it might be a mind reset or reboot for all kinds of different habits or addictions that are bad. So that'll be fun if we get to do that study, go test the different social geofrequencies, uh test the the brainwave gamma that we face on that study. So <clears throat> And maybe the home run with that would be something I haven't even thought of. Maybe your listeners can contact me and go, what about this? Yeah, try it. Give me right. some feedback. I'll get rid of whatever those cravings are, right? Um, I don't even want to bring this up, but I saw it on the news last night. It was on John Oliver. It was one of the congressmen or something has an app that he shares with his son where they can spy on each other and make sure they're not watching porn. <laughs> it's some porn security app. And it was the whole thing that John Oliver did last night. And I'm like, what? He goes, that's creepy. You got your son and your dad. But anyway, yeah. maybe 
another one, right? Is watching too much porn, maybe you try 417. So anyway, there's a long list of cool addiction things that could be tried. Yeah. And see if they have <clears throat> Well, I know for our listeners, addiction is one of the top topics and, uh, you know, that we have, you know, we have a lot of people with food addiction, a lot of people with alcohol and drug addiction, and, you know, a, a, there's a, a lot of people who are trying to, uh, you know, just have addictive personalities. There's something in their, in their brain and they just, they get addicted to things very easily and they can't stop. And then we had a woman who just recently came on and she talked about, helping helping people get off of porn for porn addiction and the rates skyrocketed because it's it's a topic that's real these things are real people are actually they know they're addicted they can't stop there is something going on in their brain because we do have a part of our brain that controls our addictive behaviors and what happens if our frequency could actually calm those brave ways or change the way we think and perceive things and take it away where we don't feel addicted to it? You know, that's that's an amazing thing. And I don't know why, but just as you were talking, what popped in my head was gambling. Gambling, was yes. Mm -hmm. Another one that I hadn't even thought of. In fact, I've never had that conversation with anyone yet, but it might be something to go try. And what it's actually doing to your brain, we don't know exactly how it's rebooting or resetting it's not yeah it's not, it's not like schwarzenegger movie where i'm redoing your entire mind or something but i'm trying to understand what it is based on comments people make and they're just kind of like i don't know i feel just lifted or something kind of something off my shoulders yeah comments like i just didn't want to be around i don't want to go do anything I didn't want to be my own friends and now I do right when it comes to anxiety and stuff. So they're, they're not. And with the pain one, it's really weird as this is the most common comment when their pain goes away is they don't say, Hey, my pain went away. They go, something's not right. Their brain hasn't processed yet that it's better. Yeah. But it's almost like the brains like, like I injured my foot. This is leg. This is, this is an interesting story. So this is super sad that I kicked a soccer ball too hard, okay? <laughs> but I thought it was sciatica. So <clears throat> I ran the sciatic protocol for a week every day and it didn't get better. So here's one interesting thing with the frequencies. If you don't get better, you might be in that small percentage, but it's more likely you self-diagnose wrong. Ah. Your protocol. So I'm like going, why wouldn't the sciatica work? It feels exactly like every description. Then I thought about, I was walking to the beach. There's a family out in the ocean. Their soccer ball was going to wash away. And I saw their towel. So I tried to kick it up there and it didn't go the whole way. It rolled back down the beach. I kicked it again. Yeah. It didn't go. I'm like, am I committed now to get this ball up there? So I kicked as hard as I could. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't think much about it. And then walking home, I could feel my right foot was a little tingling. I forgot all that. Right. It happened. Well, I ran sciatica and it didn't fix it. So I've been running for tendons and muscle injury and that stuff on the device, and I'm fine now. Wow. It took, it took a week. And, you know, now I can't separate exactly did, did, how, how much did time finally heal it versus the device, but I actually don't care in my case because yeah. I can walk. Oh, yeah. well, I couldn't even hurt bed. It hurt that back. I mean, like, flopping from side to side bed before I switched sides, I'd go, because <laughs> I knew it was going to hurt like crazy so anyway yeah. so that's some cool stuff the last one i want to talk about real quick is just and i'm still not there yet but i'm one of those for meditation yeah the brain theta i'm getting all kinds of feedback on brainwave theta helping a lot i have i am the worst meditator in the world I, I have the worst monkey brain ever is for me to think about nothing for 10 seconds is a home run right mm -hmm. but it's it's helping me some. I'm not there yet, but I'm like, I'm keeping after. But I am getting better at it. Right? Yeah. And so that's that's just kind of the last one that I think is cool. Getting you know, why you're doing yoga or stuff that you're already doing. What's again cool about this device that separates it from a lot of things is it's therapy on the go. Yeah. Right? It's not that I got to go to a clinic. It's not a big bulky thing I got to carry around. You just all the yoga pants you guys have has a gigantic pocket on the side of it, right? That you put your phone in, just stick it in that and yeah. run beta while you're doing yoga or trying to meditate. And so it's it's really convenient that way for meditation. And 
yeah, we're getting some really good feedback on that. You know, it's funny you say that because I was never into like I loved yoga, but it was very hard for me to get to that meditation, that calmness state. And when we would do when I would go to meditation classes, it usually took me to the end of the class to actually right. feel relaxed. And then but that would be the end of the class. And then we have to get up and go. But it it's like I right. didn't have time to really enjoy it because it was it took me all the way to the end of the class. But then I started to do the chakra bowls, which is sound frequencies. And I would close my eyes and I would listen to each bowl had a different frequency and then you could make it vibrate. And then I would feel my brain, something was happening in my brain. I could feel the different pressures in my brain, but it wasn't bad. It was a good thing, but it would make me so relaxed. Certain bowls would just calm me and, and clear my mind where I couldn't get that in just a regular meditation class. I couldn't get down to that relaxed state. But those sound frequencies put me right away within a few few minutes. I was at such a calm, you know, um, at, at a calm state. And it, but those frequencies are made from energy. You know, the, the, you just have a stick and you're just going against the bowl. And it's the energy that's making these sounds that we can interpret through our hearing. So really, it's the energy, just like the technology you have that helped me get to that calmness so quickly yeah and it's, a, it's a very good point so don't get i don't want your listeners to get lost in the magic of pemf and magnetic fields it's energy okay yes. so it can be a magnetic field it can be electrical current it can be a mechanical vibration like this chair shaking it can be light it can be sound and the sulfogeo frequencies many of those bowls are exactly that which are the sulfogeo frequencies that we have on the device right um I'm also, I have some partners right now that that's their expertise is bowls, mm -hmm. sound bowls. And stuff. So we're looking at all the frequencies that working the best for them. And do we, you know, put those somehow into the device and in a future release, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not sure if we're going to do a future release anytime soon. Because I thought I was doing goodness in the world by adding a few protocols, but it backfired on me. Because everyone's like, I don't, mine doesn't have that. Like, well, it didn't exist when you bought it. It does now. So that's <laughs> some problems. I got to figure out how to manage the new releases. But we have a brand new device out. It came out middle of November. I don't plan on changing it this year. It's got 59 core protocols. The other 70 expansion protocols between those two, it, there's something there. I mean, you could I, always I, do the, the up versions, you know, just like Apple does with their phones. You know, you could have, you could, you could keep the old one, but then you have the option of the new one. And I see many companies do that also, you know, they always keep the old one, but when they do upgrade, you know, you have the option to upgrade or you could just, you know, get happy yeah, yeah. all the time with the iPhones. <laughs> it's like I get doctors call me twice a week. I need a programmable one though. Yeah, tough. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to make it so simple that if it's programmable and somebody can plug in a cord and put in the USB and screw up the programming by downloading something. I mean, yes, it could be designed to make it less risky, but I still have people that turn on and go, okay, it's on. What do I do now? Well, watch the instructions for two minutes. By the way, for your listeners, the instructions are on this card. It comes in the box. If you spend <laughs> three, three minutes watching that, you won't have to call me. You right. Understand. It's that simple, but yeah, there's no, nobody watches them. They're like, um, but most people get it, but there's still questions. I had somebody jam an RCA cable in here to try to charge it. I'm like, what cable are you use? Show me a picture. Send me a picture. I'm like, that's a pink cord. Yeah, that's the cord you sent me. I only have white cords. I don't have any pink cords. <laughs> I don't know what you shoved in there. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty funny because he. I've been called a psychic because women will contact it. So we've been only the women so far admit it. They go, what do I do if it gets wet? I goes, quit dropping it in the toilet. <laughs> and multiple ones go in the toilet. I don't know how this is happening. I know women are, they're bra and they're bending over or they're doing something. Somehow it's, I don't know what goes on in a female bathroom. We don't want it, but a lot. <laughs> I just, I just go to the toilet. it's like, rice is not going to work. Hit it with a blow dryer as quick as you can. So the insides don't corrode and it'll it'll i've had them all work so far as long as you dry it fast enough don't leave it overnight but right don't drop it in the toilet 
<laughs> yeah, the first first time that happened, he goes, are you a psychic? No, I'm just thinking through how else does this thing get wet? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's not waterproof. Um, no, it's not. It's not like your phone, which water resists because we had to put holes where the coils are to let it ventilate because it does put out a little bit of heat. Yeah. In fact, it like 105 Fahrenheit, which is like warm water on your wrist is what right. it feels like. Which most people like anyway, but yeah, yeah, it asks all the time. Mine's warm. Is it supposed to? Yeah, it's in the instructions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think you know. I think it's amazing that you have a ninety-seven percent success rate. That tells you something right then and there. That would make me want to purchase it right right away. Is the success rate that you got to be careful with that? I'm doing that off of returns and that type of thing i know back to the statistics i know i have a 95 percent success rate with ptsd you can bleep this out i have 100 percent with asthma but i don't have a large enough population to make the p factor argument right so i don't know what back to blood sugar i'd love to be able to have a hard number adhd for kids we have a hard number because this exact protocol is used in cleveland clinic and they have a 75% success rate with ADHD. Now it's being delivered back to the energy thing. It's being delivered with wires. Yeah. But it's the protocol that I'm using at, at Cleveland Clinic. They're just historic. They're using this device now, but historically, most of the data was generated with a, a unit that looks an expensive unit that looks like a 10G. Right. So, yeah. 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 The there are many people with ADHD that are adults too. So I'm sure this would help the adults too. Absolutely. And yes. And actually I probably have more success so far, me personally with ADHD and adult, because we haven't quite figured out the formula with a kid who doesn't want to wear it or put it in his pocket, stick it next to him while he's sleeping. So, so what they're actually doing at ADHD or at Cleveland clinic, they have electrodes that they can't put on a kid either because they won't sit still long enough. Right. So he's actually running three machines to cut the time in it because it's an hour and a half and he's putting them in a bathtub. Oh, and really? They, yeah, he's throwing electrodes in the bathtub. Is it going to shock him? No, the energy level is so low. It's a thousand times less than a TENS unit. It doesn't electric, but you can't make a kid sit in a bathtub for an hour and a half. The water gets cold. Yeah. And you can play with them for 30 minutes as a stretch with ducks and that kind of stuff. But that's how he's been doing it, which is totally opposite protocols being the same, right? It's nowhere near an on the go therapy. He has right. a two year list at the Cleveland Clinic for people to even get in. Yeah. Right? So much better approach. But I have the solution for dogs, how to attach it to a dog. It's a bandana. Which works oh, really? Fantastic. Yeah, with these bandanas that uh, look like that, that are custom designed to. Oh, very the cool. Then the bandana just goes on the dog. And then we are testing now socks for horses so wow they, they, it's actually a product that exists called shoe fly that keeps the flies off their leg and i'm modifying that design to just hold the vibe for arthritis relax and balance same kind of ailments that old people get old yeah. horses get you know i had a lady crying the other night she goes all of us people that spend a lot of money on horses, we want to ride them. Then when they get arthritis, we can't ride them. You still have that horse for years. And so if you get a couple more years of arthritis free, so I'm like, yeah, we're trying to run a study and show it works for horses. But I have a bet going with some people. It's like, there's no way your dumb little tiny device is going to do anything to a 2000 pound horse. I'm like, well, we'll see. Well, that's it not might. true. That's not true because you know what I do. I do red light therapy. I have a red light therapy band and they use it for men and women. And it goes, it doesn't matter what weight you are. A small little thing goes through your body and you know, cause it's energy and what you have is energy. It's going through the body. So it's going through the entire body. It doesn't have to be large. You know, you, as long as those frequencies are going through your body, like you said, the energy is, is going through it. And it's, right. it's helping, you know, with whatever condition they may have. What one physics point of view there that just got the realization on my boat last weekend, right? Was the magnetic field itself does not travel that far, but you can put this in your pocket and still make gout go away in your foot. How is that possible? It has to be resonating with the water in your body. I believe that. Um, 
because if you're not hydrated, it doesn't work as well. Right. Which we know. So I think it's like a pebble in the pond. It's resonating with the water in your body. That's how it's traveling. And then what you just said, the magnetic field is going to make an electrical field, electrical current, which is going to travel through your body because your body is electrically conducted. The, on the boat last weekend, when I was explaining this to another couple, the comment that hit me, she's like, that's probably like the same thing when a woman gets an ultrasound, they won't let you pee till the procedure's over because they want to keep all that water in your body. Yes, mm. it's exactly the same thing that's happening. They don't want you to pee because you don't have enough water to have the ultrasound resonate so they can get the image back. Right, so right, right. Start using that example is ultrasound, a- you can't pee. My wife told me, I go, you knew that? She goes, yeah, every time you have that, ever have that done, they won't let you pee. <laughs> so my tank just came on, she probably flashed all your your viewers, but... Uh, <laughs> that's a good example that's the call center back there the fish yeah <laughs> no but that that that's that's that that's um a really good example and i you know it's it's amazing it's amazing what it can do and i, I love the fact that it, it helps so many different conditions not just the ones that we mentioned today but it could help so many and it you know it just, it's and it's so inexpensive you know you go to a doctor's visit you know i i went to a doctor's visit for a consultation and it cost me six hundred dollars just for the consultation so imagine you can get a device like this and you can also and receive a discount, an automatic coupon discount on it. And that's like a, a dinner, going out to dinner. And look how many con- conditions and look how many things it could help you with. And it's rechargeable. So you keep, it's like, it's not going to die. It's not going to break. You just keep taking care of it and recharging it. And you can use it over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, which that was the struggle I had trying to make it affordable, which I, it, it is, I think, I mean, it's, Oh, it is. I think so. It's super inexpensive. Right. But it's uh, yeah, relative to New York dinner and stuff, but it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, Hey, I don't know how to answer this to customers when they go, well, yours can't be as good as this $8,000 device. It costs more for a reason. I'm like, Hmm, not really, not, not necessarily. That's, and I fall in that same trap too. You know, if I'm buying a certain product, like I look at three of them, that one's the most expensive. I'll just grab that one because I, I think I want the better one. But it does, it's working. We're getting good data back. The key point too is even though it's affordable, if it doesn't work for you, I'll give you your money back. And especially if you have any Canadian listeners or people outside the US, we have a 30 day money back guarantee. It's 30 days from when you get it. I had to change that because Canadian customers is being evil and hold them for. 10 days, two weeks sometimes. And then people get it like they panic and got it. I was like, I'll work with customers. I want you to want to help you. Right. I'm going to give you, I'll give you the 30 days to try and use it. If it doesn't work, then I'll give you your money back. But don't, don't get, I just don't, I'm trying to avoid some of these guys. And this has happened more than once now, not a lot. This thing's a paperweight. It doesn't work. I don't like it. I go send it back and I'll give you your money back. This one guy for six months would not send it back. He finally did this week. He goes, I apologize, Mark. Obviously, it was working because I felt way better then than I do now. Can I buy another one? <laughs> but yeah, just don't ever email me again. I joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are seeing that as like, ah, it's a, back to that weird thing that you forgot how bad you felt, right? Yeah. And seeing that in a lot of studies too. It's like, I could always do this. I'm like, no, 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 you couldn't. And one of the best ways besides biomarkers and Fitbits, you know, things to go measure besides just how you feel or not is ask your spouse and your family. Right. You know, am I complaining less, right? If it's pain, um, anxiety, am, am I see more outgoing? Am I communicating with kids more? You'll get more feedback from that maybe than yourself. And with the ADHD is a good, good point. The Cleveland Clinic, the doctor there, uh, what he told me, it's almost always the teacher calls the parents and said, did, what medication did you change your kid to? <laughs> they didn't change his medication, right? He's on, well, he's, he's way better in school. So it's the teachers and stuff notice it. So that's kind of an interesting thing too is, yeah, don't think it's working for you. Ask some other people if you're behaving, if you, you feel like you're better, right? Right, right. 
that's a great idea. You know, I, I think it's, it's so important for people to understand that if you can do it the natural way, it, it's so much better than going on these drugs. You know, this, the side effects to some of these drugs are, are horrendous. You know, I've known people that have, have gone on depression drugs and they, you know, they, they, can, they can't even feel anymore. You know, like a car could run somebody over in front of them and they don't even have any sympathy because they can't feel the emotion or, you know, just get in terrible side effects where they get the anxiety or they get the mood swings and the anger issues because of the side effects of the medication, or they're getting constant headaches. And, you know, it, it all depends on the person, you know, everybody reacts differently to medications, but if you could do it naturally, if you could give it a try and see what happens, and if you could do it naturally without the source of medica medications, it's so well, you know, it's so worth it, you know? And uh, because of some of these, some of these medicines, their side effects can be really, really harsh. Just one point, my pet peeves, you know, cholesterol, blood pressure, a few other things. It is awful that the stat people are not in jail. There's a 35% side effect rate with stats. Yeah. Uh, they do what's called, the original study we called a run-in period, which for six weeks, before the study starts is what they claim. Yeah. They came out if you had a side effect. 35% of the people have muscle pain from statins, mm -hmm. but they don't, as I said, it wasn't the official study yet. That was pre-study. That was a run-in period is what they call it. If you did that in any other science, you'd be in jail. Yes. You can't hide that data, but that's what they do. All my friends that are on statins are like, yep, leg cramps, do your arms hurt? Yep, yep. Right, it's awful. And the data shows it's not, again, not a doctor, but my soapbox of statins is go do your own research, right? Yeah. Take care. Go. <clears throat> you can go Google NIH PubMed is uh, high LDL does not warrant statin medication. No. This guy did a meta analysis of all the studies out there that said, nope, there is no benefit to that. Right. That's scary that it's the most used was the most used drug in the world, still the most profitable, excuse me, most profitable drug in the world. Yeah. But the whole, whole side effect thing is, yeah, they're awful. And, but your body's mechanical, it's chemical and it's electrical, mm -hmm. right? So it's weird that the United States, uh, we know why in 1934, but anyway, that we just stopped doing e-stimulation med. Yeah. The rest of the world not. Everyone else did. The U.S. just quit doing it was just, if it's not drugs or surgery, you weren't funded and you lost your medical license. And that, yeah. that, that hangover, Stacy is still there. I mean, my doctor, I'm not going to do anything the American Medical Association doesn't recommend. Like, right. You don't even listen to the data. You don't want, I summarized it for you right here. She won't read it. Right. <clears throat> Frustrating. Oh. It is frustrating. I've come across many medical doctors like that. And, and I, you know, my mother was having uh, very bad joint pain and she was on a statin and she thought, you know, they diagnosed her with, with, with a condition and she, she was about to take medication for this condition, but then she decided to just try it. She, ha she, she took half the statin and all of a sudden the, the, the amount of pain she was getting in her hands was, was gone you know, it, her, all the pain went away. So then she took herself off of it and she started using more natural techniques. And it was because of the statin that she was getting all this muscle and joint pain from. And then she was, things were slipping out of her hands because she couldn't close her hands quick enough because of the pain in her hands, but it was all because of the statin drug she was taking. Right. That's, that's super common, unfortunately, but Okay, we beat up stats enough. We'll get All right. <laughs> so I want everyone to know that, you know, don't forget there is a special um, discount that Mark is giving away. Um, you know, it's a very reasonable cost for this this device. And as you can see, it, it helps with all different types of conditions and it has a very high success rate and it's doing very well. And he has lots of testimonials. If you go on his website, you'll see uh, different people, you know, saying wonderful things about it and how they helped him. Uh, you know how how that how it helped them, and it, it also has he has tons and tons and tons of information on his website. Tell everybody your website so they know where to go. Uh, Rizona, so it's R E S O N A. It's short for resonance. Rizona dot help forward slash um, 
advisor. So yeah, we have a specific page for your listener. So resona.health forward slash advisor, and then you'll find all the information from there. And you can ask Monique anything. She'll know. <laughs> and, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for a second i forgot i i was thinking monique was a real person that i remember that you said early on that that's your ai person yeah <laughs> I'm, into a real person. I'm gonna get scared if she grows an attitude <laughs> yeah uh, it's, it's interesting yeah i so you know everybody i i suggest that you go on to mark's page look at it you know, really understand, you know, what this device is good for and how it could maybe benefit you and give it a try. You know, lots of people are afraid of change. Lots of people are afraid of trying things, you know, but you know what, if I could, if I could help a condition that I'm dealing with on a daily basis that won't go away and that's causing me pain or causing me problems and I, I would give it a try, you know, it's, it's something, it's something well worth it. And like I mentioned, you know, I live on the East coast and you know, what he charges for his device is the same thing. It's going to charge me to go out for a dinner on a Saturday night. So <laughs> imagine that. And, and you could have a device that could cure, you know, and help and help get rid of you know, a condition that you've been fighting against your whole entire life. Okay. Thank you again for having me. It's, it's always been fun. Yes, it's always been fun. And thank you so much for taking, you know, the time out to, to even, you know, to create this device and to care so much about people and, and helping people, you know, heal themselves naturally and not have to really get, um, what? And dogs. And dogs. Yes. And dogs. And dogs. Yeah. And you know what? I my, I had one dog that had terrible arthritis. He got to the point where he stopped walking up the stairs. And many dogs suffer from arthritis, and they suffer from. They're just like people. If I you know if I if I gave you a list of some, my my older dogs and all the things they had towards the end, you know, of their lives, they they had they had everything you could think of. My one dog even had Alzheimer's. He had Alzheimer's, you know, arthritis, you know. And uh, my other dog had a stroke towards the end. So they're, they're just like humans. They're, you know, and they, sh and they have so much love and compassion. They should be treated with respect, you know, any just animal. Like, just, like, just like humans, but they don't complain as much. Yeah. Well, you know, my dogs actually have a high, low pitch. And if they don't like something with that oh. high, low pitch, they let me know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Thanks again for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a great day. You too. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.